In Senegal, authorities have limited access to the mobile internet today as members of parliament prepare to debate a bill that would delay elections for six months. There have been protests for a second day in Dakar today after President Makisal announced on Saturday the elections, which had been set for February 25th, will be postponed. Saul cited a dispute over the candidate list and alleged corruption in the constitutional body that organized it. Several opposition candidates have been barred from running. Saul has said he is not running for a third term. Mimi Toure, a lawyer, former prime minister and disqualified presidential hopeful, is urging Saul to hold elections before his second term expires on April 2nd. Toure told me a short time ago that opposition, civil society and pro-democracy pro groups will keep insisting on holding the election on time so the country's democracy is not undermined. Her remarks come after she was released following a brief arrest last night in the Senegalese capital, Dakar. Well, what I'm going to say is we're going to keep fighting for Senegalese democracy. Presidential election has never been postponed in this country since 1960, which is the beginning of the existence of Senegal as an independent state. So that's the first time ever uh, that one presidential election is postponed. Makisal uh, is supposed to go uh, come the 2nd of April. Um, and he's trying to overtake, which is unacceptable. So uh, yesterday was uh, a day of mobilization of Democrats, and I was there. Unfortunately, all of this is putting uh, our country uh, you know, in instability because people would not accept democracy going backward the way it, uh, it is. Um, Makisal should organize election as um, decided by the Constitution on 25th of February, um, and that's all that we are asking for. In postponing the election, he expressed concern about allegations of corruption with the Constitutional Council that led to the disqualification of some prominent candidates, including you and Mr. Ward, from competing in the election. But don't you think these concerns have to be addressed? Yes, but we don't want to be an excuse for Makisal to overstate. Um, he want to postpone for one year, two years, or five years. Um, so now, uh, despite the fact that myself, I have been uh, removed from the process illegally, I'm the one saying, let's press on, because the decision of the Constitutional Court are not are supposed to be definitive. So when you start uh, playing with the Constitution, and then uh, you open up for any kind of adventure, that's not what we want, um, because now... We're going to find ourselves in a state of no law. Uh, President Makisal firm and 2nd of April. If we don't go to election, so what would happen? That's not what we want. No matter what the imperfections of the, of the Constitution is, let's press on. So why wouldn't opposition groups, civil society groups, and other stakeholders engage the president in a dialogue to address some of these concerns that some Senegalese are expressing in order to chart the way forward. Why don't we start by organizing the election as uh, the Constitution say, and we'll have time to dialogue. So that's not how Constitution is going. You start by respecting the laws, you start by respecting the Constitution, and then you open up dialogue. Dialogue is always good, uh, but dialogue cannot be beyond um, uh, the, the, the Constitution provision, because that's what he did. Um, that would be the, the second or the third dialogue he's calling for. Um, so now that he must go, because that's the bottom line, President Makisal must go come 2nd of, of, of April. And he has no choice. So let's carry on. And then with the new regime, the new president, we'll open up a dialogue to see how to reform our constitution, how to improve the electoral process. But he has no longer the legitimacy to deal with that. That's a question of legitimacy. Um, in 2nd of April, he no longer will be the president of Senegal. So now the only task at hand for him is to organize the election, fair, transparent, and inclusive election on 25th of February. I think it's quite clear for Senegalese, and that's the only thing we have. Authorities in the southern uh... Somali town of Beled Hawo said six Ethiopians were among seven people killed in an overnight attack by suspected Al-Shabaab militants.
The district commissioner of the town, Abdelashid Abdi Alog, said that gunmen attacked a compound, killing five women and two men. Last night, at around 3.24 a.m. local time, we had heavy gunfire. It happened at a time when security patrols changed shifts and the murderers took advantage of that, Alog said. Troops responded and when they reached the site, they saw civilians, men, women and children, who some of them were killed and some injured. The six slain Ethiopians are ethnic Olomo, while the seventh victim is a Somali woman, Alok said. Six other Ethiopians were injured in the attack, he added. He said that the Somali woman killed was a neighbor of the Ethiopians who came out when she heard the gunshots and shone a light on the attackers. Alok said the security forces offered support by calling the ambulance services and evacuating the wounded to medical centers. He said some of the wounded were taken to Mandela for treatment. Authorities suspect al Shabaab militants to be behind the attack. Alok said Beled Hawar is a border town which sees movement of people from Kenya, Ethiopia, as well as Somalis. He said the attackers fired indiscriminately. The security minister for Jubaland State, Yusuf Hussein Dumal, said that his administration believes al Shabaab targeted the Ethiopian nationals who live in the town of for business and dim domestic work purposes. He said, Four gunmen were behind the attack. He says security forces followed them, but the attackers escaped on motorcycles that collected them from the outskirts of the town and fled into towards the Al Shabaab controlled area of Gadun, the highway. Asked about the motive of the attack, Dumal said he believes. The militants intended to create conflict between Somalis and Ethiopians. Thank you so much for watching and peace.